a VLAN. Will Cisco say, and we're not we're not going to go into CCDA stuff, but they say around or maximum, sorry, of 500. I'm not telling you here that you must get to the number 500 before you create another VLAN. This is really going into the sort of design side of things, and it all depends on how much traffic. For example, a computer aided design CAD. And takes up a huge amount of bandwidth, and if you're if you're designing a network for an architecture company, you may need to think things uh, through very differently. Again, this isn't the place for me to give um, design advice, but I just wanted to point out what Cisco say uh, is their recommended maximum for VLANs. And again, it's different for every switch as well. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is the difference between access and trunk links. Uh, I mentioned these earlier on, and it's a, a fundamental fact for the a fundamental area of knowledge for the CCNA. So I've got a definition of access links and, and trunk links to show you. But the first thing I'd like to show you here is the standard connection from a device, a house. is here. So you've got a PC, a network printer, or generally a server, although you may you can have a trunk link from a, a switch to a server. Access link is normally for our purposes a connection between a host on your network and then the switch. Basically the feature of an access link is that it can only carry traffic for one VLAN. If we just hop over to howtonetwork.net, I've actually um, got the definition of an access link, link here. So uh, an access link, a switch port which is defined as an access link can only be a member of one VLAN. The device connected to the access link is not aware of the existence of any other VLANs. So as far as it's concerned, it's just on a flat LAN. The switch will uh, add a tag to the frame as it enters the access link from the host and remove the tag uh, when the frame exits the switch port towards the host. So the switch needs to know so, um, which VLAN the host is a member of, obviously because it's passing information between different VLANs. So it adds a little tag onto the frame. But as far as the end device is concerned, it doesn't need to know. Now if we go back to our device, um, network here, what we have is a connection between two switches. Now let's say, for example, we've got host here, which is part of our human resources. And down here, we've got hosts that are part of the same HR. Now the problem is, when traffic has to traverse between two switches, we need a different type of um, link. This is known as a trunk link. The reason is basically the switch has to tag the traffic so it can traverse between two different switches. Now one of the things you don't see in many books anymore for some reason but the, the minimum speed the connection for a trunk link is 100 meg. Uh, purely because of the amount of traffic you normally do have fiber links between two switches. If I can pull up my so here on this, it's a 2950T. You can actually have models of 2950 that has got its own fiber links, but it'll have its own connection, high-speed connection. The older 1900 type switch had 10 meg connections all the way across, and then it had two 100 meg. But the times, they are a changing. So if we go back to howtonetwork.net, and we look at trunk links, a trunk link can carry traffic from different VLANs at a time. A trunk link is a 100 or a 1000 megabit per second point to point link. Now here's something to bear in mind, nice little exam question that they can ask. It can be between two switches, which is the standard thing, a switch and a router, which we'll come to, and a switch and a server. You can get special network cards where you can basically have a trunk link between a switch and a server. 
The whole point of a trunk link is uh, it carries traffic from multiple VLANs at the same time. Now I'm not talking about virtual trunking protocol at the moment but basically you have to have an encapsulation type um, so the switches can communicate into switch link or 802.1Q. For the purposes of the CCNA exam the 2950 switch can actually only use uh, one type so it's 802.1Q. Okay, so I just want a little uh, recap of what we've covered so far. We've covered VLAN basics, some VLAN rules, we talked about access and trunk links. Um, it'll make more sense when we've actually configured these, but I've given you an overview. We've talked about broadcast on a VLAN and the fact that um, only devices in the same VLAN will receive a broadcast frame. What we're going to do now is look at VLANs on one switch. So this is a, a basic configuration. We're going to forget about any trunk links at the moment. We don't need to worry about that. And what we're going to configure is a very simple network. Again, there's lots and lots of VLAN labs on howtonetwork.net and I do recommend you have a good understanding of the theory as well. So I don't particularly recommend using um, emulators, but this is a pretty good one and it'll save um, messing about with anything too complicated. We've got our basic switch in the middle here which is a 2950 which is what you'll be configuring in the CCNA exam and you've got PC0, PC1, PC3 and PC4 and I've got a little diagram here. Now for the purposes of this lab I think what we can do you can forget this is here for the moment forget about the router as well so what we've got is PC 0, 1, 3 and 4. And what we want to do, just to keep it nice and simple, let's create two VLANs on our switch. We'll have 0 and 3 and these guys can be in VLAN 2 and let's call this HR for human resources. The other thing I want to point out is um, by default all devices are in the native VLAN. The native VLAN by default is VLAN 1. So this is the default VLAN that all the traffic will be passing across. If you want to create VLANs on the switch we recommend um, you start off with any VLAN apart from VLAN number 1. And we'll create a second VLAN for PCs 1 and 4. and PCs 1 and 4 will be VLAN 3 and we'll call these guys Finance. Now I'm going to come back to this diagram I don't know about you but I'm a fairly visual person so we'll be coming back um, just to refer to it just so we can take stock of where we are. The other thing, do you remember what I said about IP addressing? So each VLAN has to have its own subnet because this is it's its own network in its own right, although it's um logical. So let's say VLAN three is in one nine two dot one six eight dot three dot zero. Let's get the dots there. And we'll leave it at a standard slash twenty four mask. Now VLAN 2, let's say it's 192.